lava flow, the worst natural disaster that we ever experience here on the islands are herds of wild hogs, okay? All around me here is what used to be my sweet potatoes until the pigs broke in. This is a great big mess right here. It looks like I come through here with a caterpillar tractor. Um, this was what a couple of hundred pound pigs will do in one evening to a sweet potato patch. Lucky for me that the new bananas and the new tamarillos over there they were not interested in. They half destroyed my giant lily koi by digging up next to them, but they're still with me. But this mess over here, this mess used to be sweet potatoes, and it took them suckers one evening, just one. 24 hours later, they made their way back in here. And this bunch of nice dirt used to be my other sweet potato patch. Now in the case of this one, I knew they were coming. They'd already hit it. And so I got in here and I dug, 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 dug. And I dug up a good portion of my potatoes before they got in. But then they come in looking for the rest the next night. This is the kind of mess that a pig will create. Right there, you can see the size of these prints. That is my hand. There is the, pug, the pig footprint. You see, this is one big hog. Here you can see footprints in the soft soil. From the indentations, I would say this thing weighed about 200 pounds. Right over here underneath the cuckooing nut tree, they went rooting around digging for worms and stuff. But not being the passive sort of a character that was going to allow pigs to just tear my place to shreds, first thing I did was find a gentleman named Joe who uh, does pig snares. So right here, set there around the kukui nut trunk, coming down here and setting some sticks, and then baited there with a little bit of tiny sweet potatoes that I dug up because they seemed to like them. We got ourselves a pig snare. There ain't no pig in the snare. So, so much for the pig snare. Here's another pig snare. Nothing in it. Another one over here. And there's Ellen down there and she's trying to clean up the fence line because as you can see from the look at this fence, it's time for us to put in a brand new fence and it is half of the reason why we got a pig problem. The other half of the reason the neighbors put in new fences behind us and redirected the flow of hogs. Got inside the strawberry guava over here, nosed their way through, and then started popping through the holes in my old fence. As you can see, my fence is pretty beat up. See here how it happened is, got new neighbors, Building a nice house back there, but instead of taking the fence and setting it on the boundary line, which is right over here, they decided that they would build a new fence anywhere from about 4 foot to as much as 25 foot inside their property lines, cutting out this great big triangle of land uh, of theirs onto my property. And so putting in these fences across two neighbors in a row here, put new fence in. So they run fence up this way. What they created was this hog run right here coming along the creek. And so I went ahead and I patched the gap with some old wire here, which they sh really should have done was to run to the corner post, not here. But I did it, and so that's the way it goes. So I had to close off the hole because the pigs were streaming in here. Well, as soon as I took care of the pigs streaming in there, they turned around and they started coming down the other side off this way. So I had to build 42 foot of fence yesterday to uh, connect back to their uh, line that was off property line and run it back to my corner post to keep the pigs on that side of the fence. On Monday, Poncho and his guys are coming in here 
and right along my pretty row of Hawaiian koa trees they're gonna run me in a new fence that's gonna cost me but after having come out here and built patching fences and cleaned off all the stuff growing on the fence and whatnot I am so tired that I really do need somebody else's help to do this yeah, right over here we got more pig tracks here you can see where they busted a pepper stem getting in here it was all about that spot right there that used to be a great big purple sweet potato plant now it's just a batch of dirt covered in a weed block to keep them out they dug that thing up and that is the house right there so these things have no fear of men tell you what right on the other side of the driveway we got this mess over here this is was the bank along my driveway I had been killing the weeds here by using cardboard and then there was one sweet potato plant growing wild in them cuttings over there this big pile of crap right over here <laughs> used to be pineapples and a compost heap and again there were some wild sweet potatoes the proof that my fencing I put in is working is right there is the last sweet potato left on the farm they didn't come for it last night. The other secret weapon in my artillery here was the car alarms on both of these PTs in the carport. I get up 12:30 every night and set off the car alarms. That kind of threw them out of here. I didn't like all that noise. So, pigs, natural disasters in Hawaii. Like I say, lava flow is only worse because usually the pigs will leave the house standing but they'll level everything else okay Pele and her lava well she takes the house too and of course Pele leaves a layer of nice molten lava over your land whereas the pigs well they leave a lot of pig poop um, so there are a variety of possible things a person can do when it comes to pigs the number one the best means of control excellent fences I was playing Russian roulette when it came to my back fence because my back fence wasn't very good and all it took was just a little change in the neighborhood and a few people putting up fences blocked the pigs paths that they'd been taken and so they turned and when they turned they discovered my property uh, so currently in agreement with the neighbors I've strung fences back to their corner posts stopping the pigs from coming in it was a temporary fix the agreement was by Monday I'm putting an all new fence myself and they can keep the pigs on their side over there but fences number one definitely uh, nice tight ones too um, but otherwise in Hawaii there are many different legal ways of dealing with pigs I think that the only things you can't do with a pig here is you can't use explosives and so landmines and C4 caddy shacks out of the question uh, not legal and you can't use poison baits okay that's not legal either but otherwise you wouldn't believe the laws on hunting pigs here because of the traditional Polynesian culture influence we still have laws on the books where it's legal for a man with a buck knife to take a pig that's a traditional technique where they use dogs they chase the pigs and then when the pigs are cornered the hunter actually goes ahead and slits their throats with a knife this is traditional and it's still legal here um, Guns are legal for hunting pigs, provided there's enough property around. And so shooting pigs is one way you can do it. Unfortunately, they're really hard to find in the daytime. And so they're, they're a tough thing unless you're using dogs that can sniff them out. Um, during the night, they're out and about, and you can find them pretty easily. But you're really not supposed to be out hunting with a rifle or a shotgun after dark. So uh, that one's kind of out of the question. Snares uh, are a big way that, that this is done. The snare is a simple thing, and the pig basically just gets tangled up in it. The snare tightens on him. The more he pulls, the more it tightens down on the pig, the harder it is for him to get away. Um, then, of course, once you get and find your pig in the snare, he's crazy and wild, and you're going to have to dispatch him. And so then that will also require some uh, brute force. Uh, 
they use cage traps here. These big wire boxes with a door that they bait inside and the pigs will go in after the bait. The thing slams shut and that way you can take the pigs live. You can relocate them or do whatever you want to with them. Uh, when you use a box trap like that, the cage trap, um, the only problem with the cage traps is they work pretty well on the smaller, dumber ones, but the ones that got in here, they are not stupid. These pigs would touch nothing except living sweet potato in the ground. That was it. They weren't going to feed on anything else. They wouldn't touch my garbage and the compost heap. Nothing. Um, real smart. Okay, They're real smart. And we've had snares out now for days. and They see them. They get around them. They have not been easy to snare. These pigs are really smart. And so that's a tough thing there. Uh, mothballs, despite the fact I do not like naphthalene, don't care for mothballs around, we did spread a couple of boxes of mothballs around the property because the pigs hate them. They operate by sense of smell, and the smell of the naphthalene drives their noses crazy. And so mothballs are a sort of repellent, uh, an emergency type thing. So we're talking snares, we're talking uh, box traps, we're talking guns, we're talking dogs and knives. It's even legal to use a spear here. <laughs> if you want to go after him with a spear, that's also legal. Um, all of these things can work. Uh, but breaking it down, your best solution is exclusion. Uh, no one's getting rid of the pigs here on the island. Uh, they've been here since the Polynesians brought the first ones. The English brought more pigs. and There have been pigs of all sorts brought over here and they're all kind of crossbred. We got our own local breed of Hawaiian wild pig. He's kind of half domestic and half wild boar. So I, I was a little disappointed uh, realizing that I couldn't use explosives on pigs here because my inclination was I wanted pressure sensitive landmines out of the sweet potato patch. Maybe sweet potatoes packed with C4 like Bill Murray would Caddyshack, you know. And put pork sausage all over the highway down here when they pick up one of my sweet potatoes. But anyway, let me do that. So I'm going to have to settle for fences. Pigs can turn paradise into complete hell, okay? I am really so happy that everything happened right now in spring. Um, you know, losing sweet potatoes was eh whatever. Sweet potatoes, I got more plants behind me here. They grow fast. I'm not crying about it. Um, the damage uh, to pineapples that had sweet potatoes around them was kind of bad. I lost probably about 30 or 40, maybe more pineapple plants. They rooted up here. Well, out of 750 of them, no big deal. Now, what would have really hurt is if they'd made it in here in August when those pineapples were ripe because they'd have gone right down the rows and they'd have eaten and ripped out everything. Can you imagine all them delicious and beautiful white pineapples turning into pig poo? Not my idea of fun. Um, and they are so aggravating. They can draw a person even who might not be particularly violent to want to do damage to them. But I know there are a lot of people out there that are, oh, I can't kill a snail, or, oh, I don't want to kill the rats, you know, and all this. Well, you know, good luck with pigs uh, if you have that kind of mindset, because these are a real pain. And so definitely tighten your fences up if you can't kill a fly, <laughs> because otherwise you're going to find yourself wanting to kill pigs. Okay, so enjoy your bacon. <laughs> Happy gardening. Thank you. Thank you.